Um, welcome to our live demo on um, EV charging communication test. So we, are, we will look at EV um, and EVSE, how they are communicating and uh, in the introduction. And in the second part, we will look at how to test this kind of communication. Before starting into the technical details, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Annette Kempf. Um, I'm the CEO of HXSINA, a company which is located in Regensburg, Germany. Um, and this presentation will not be done just by me. I will um, do the introduction on the technical background and um, Yevgeny Kühnen and Ben Baranski. Yevgeny is, is an experienced engineer in this field and Ben Baranski is a, an expert on charging communication for both the, um, the charging pole, EVSE, and the electric vehicle side. And they will give you a deep insight on, on the technical topics. So I would like to start to switch to the, the presentation slides. Um, so this is me again. And um, we, we will look into the charging communication. So meaning you have a charging station or charging pole and the electric vehicle, and they are connected via the charging plug. And we are looking at this communication, which is taking place between the EVSE and the EV. And the testing system is looking into the communication. Is it working correctly or no? And there are several test cases which are executed. Um, the content of this presentation will be, uh, we look at AC, DC charging and also the different charging modes. The low level communication, slack protocol, high level communication, and then I will hand over um, to the demo and I will just give a short explanation on the demo um, setup. Um, this short presentation is based on the embedded academy e-learning, so it was quite easy to take the pictures out of this. AC charging. In AC charging, you have um, the, the AC-DC conversion within the electric vehicle, so you need a special device for this, which is called onboard charger, OVC. Um, and in the charging station, um, you have the equipment, so you have some, some safety for, for the fuse and so on, but it's um, less complicated than uh, the DC charging pole. Yeah? Um, and for AC, as it's the normal um, grid, um, it's less um, charging capacity. So yeah, there's only a certain amount of energy you can transfer from the charging pole to the vehicle. For DC charging, um, you have a higher charging power, which you can transmit from the charging station to the electric vehicle. Um, but you need to have the, uh, the communication. And in this case, the so-called high level communication because um, the vehicles have different um, batteries and different voltage levels. And also the so-called state of charge of the battery might be higher or lower. So this information needs to be exchanged between the charging station and, and the vehicle. And this is exactly this kind of communication, why we have a test system and why we are looking at this. Um, there are different charging modes. The first three modes are for AC charging. Um, mode one is not relevant because um, this would be just connecting to the normal plug. Um, mode two is already with um, low level communication and mode three can either be low level communication or both low level and high level communication and mode one to three are for AC charging 
and mode 4 is for DC charging. And um, in DC charging, this communication always works over the low-level communication, the so-called pilot signal, and the high-level communication. The low-level communication has to be always enabled and is always active. So you cannot do the high-level communication without going through low-level communication, and it has three main states, disconnected, connected, and charging, and we look at this into detail. So at state A, um, the charging station and the vehicle are not yet connected so you see there is no connection in between and so um, also in the schematic you see that you have um, no connection and that you have a full 12 volt um, power supply so it's a fixed 12 volt signal in state b um, the charging station and the vehicle are connected, and but via this connection, um, the, the um, current flows over the R2 um, resistor, and by doing this, um, as there is a um, um, diode in between, um, in one direction you have uh, the voltage. Um, um, over the resistor, and this means that voltage level in this one direction uh, on the plus side is reduced to 9 volts, and on the minus side it's still 12 volt um, from the oscillator signal. And then going to the next state is um, happening automatically, so the car is then um, connecting this S2 switch um, and then you have a second resistor in parallel um, and then the voltage drop is even higher and you only have 6 volt. And this um, voltage level clearly indicates um, that the charging is, is starting and if you have only low level communication then really the charging for AC charging is happening then and for DC charging several additional um, data exchange and protocols are necessary. For looking into the high level communication we have to look at the OSI model for, for um, data transfer. So you have these seven layers for the transmitter and also for the receiver. And you see this um, from the application down to the physical layer. And then the communication is really physically taking place. And then you get the data um, via the different levels up to the application again. Um, we are looking at the, at the Slack first. So there is the so-called Slack protocol, and this is Slack protocol is really doing this um, physical data transfer. Um, Slack um, means signal level attenuation characterization, and Slack is mandatory for high-level communication, so we really need it. Um, and it's configuring the nodes for the power line communication PLC. And it's also filtering out crosstalk. Slack is clearly defined in the in the well, standards for the communication, and here we have an extract from the ISO 15118/3, where you see in the screenshot how it is specified. Um, I don't think we have enough um, time to go into the details. It's clearly um, indicated that this is specified in the standard and has to be implemented. So we saw these two lower layers um, of the OC model, and now we are looking into the high level communication vehicle to grid, short V2G, and there um, we see the different 
layers of this overall communication, which have to be implemented in order to establish this um, vehicle to grid communication. And exactly this is also tested with the test system. And here in this picture, you see another extract from the, from the ISO 15118. In this case, it's slash two. So here also it's specified how the high level communication vehicle to grid has to be implemented. And of course, there could be more screenshots. It's just one picture. And this to explain it into detail would be, uh, would take too much time for now. Um, I hope this is giving you enough information on what we are talking about. And now we will look at the live demo of, of um, the test system itself. And this will be done uh, by Ben Baranski, an um, electric expert for both the D 70121, um, which is a little bit older, and the ISO 15118 standard. And um, he will give you a live demo, first explain the test setup, then the test execution, and also test results, analysis, and evaluation. And I will give you the first short insight into the test setup. Um, to test the charging communication, you are either um, um, are in the role with your test system of uh, the charging station, the EBSE, or, or of the uh, EV. In this case, in this test setup, which we've chosen for today, um, we are testing against the EV. So this meaning we are simulating the behavior of the EBSE with EC sim EBSE. We have uh, um, the charging test hardware and of course the test cases. It would be also possible to, to, to switch um, the context, so to, to test the, um, the charging station side, but this um, we would need to have a separate meeting where we set up this and show how the, how the tests are done in this direction. Okay, so I will hand over to the Two guys in, in, in the R&D in the development and mainly to Brent Baranski and I'm looking forward to see their presentation. Did I? Zwei, eins. Okay, hello, <clears throat> and uh, um, thanks to Annette for the nice introduction and the explanation of the um, charging system at all. I'm here with Eugenie Kühn, one of the developers at Active China. And my name is Bernd Baranski. I'm one of the writing members of the ISO 1511-8 and also on the Dean 71 to 1. And um, I'm here as an expert for um, PLC charging. I do this job since approximately eight years and have done projects all with passenger cars and trucks and motorbikes as also with charging stations um, up to high power chargers. We want to like, we'd like to introduce our new charging test system with is um, done for the communication check at all. We have here built up um, an EV simulation with a, with a charging plug and also with the inlet for the CCS charging. And the connection to our test system is via um, banana wires, we have here um, the PP, the PE, and also the CP line. But, and the CP line is in addition also um, done with a BNC plug. 
So you can also connect an oscilloscope or you can <clears throat> do whatever you want with the CP line. For example, for calibration uses and so on, you can use the <clears throat> do whatever you want with the CP line. For example, for calibration uses and so on, you can use the BNC um, connection. If you want to test EV or any any ready-made vehicles, you need to have a special adapter, which you need to build to yourself. Also for charging spots, for ready-made charging spots, because our test system is done for lab use. So the plan is to have for developers a tool um, to be tested for their own software, for example, or to test the the system or the component or whatever is needed from your charging spot or from your vehicle. What we want to show today is just the vehicle side and may it, if it is needed and requested from some of you, of our visitors, then we want to see also the EVSE side Then um, we will do a video later on then. But now we have um, planned to do only the presentation of the vehicle side, how it works, and, and we want to show how it's um, used and how the test cases are working and so on. So let's have a look at our at our main window where we have the initial state, and you need to choose first the mode of testing, EV or EVSE. And then we open the test case section where we can see the, all the test cases which Eclipse Signer has in the portfolio, uh, which is ISO 1518 test cases uh, to the dash 4, dash 5 document, or the DEAN uh, 1 to 71 to 2. So if you can see here how to choose. Um, which are, uh, test cases, and you can see also that we have an extract out of the norm um, as a description of the test case. And you can also put several of these test cases together to one test strategy. Um, in our case here, we have already prepared a test case session. So you you can load these test cases session, and then you can see on the left side of the window all the test cases, which will be actually, which is the state inside of the communication. That means if Slack is done, if um, all the V2G messages are done, you can see it in the state window, and below you can see the real communication, so the running communication, and if. Our logging and our um, files are not enough for you for analyzing. You can also use the Wireshark in the background to trace the communication. But uh, first of all, I want to show you also some manual possibilities of our system. So, for example, we have um, manual Slack inside of our system. So you can start the Slack for the EV or the EVSE. For example, for uh, for calibration uses. So normally, if, if you want to tune your calibration, you need to run the Slack very often and um, again and again and again to check if your calibration, if the calibration of your system is right done according to the norm needs. Then we have the communicate state, which we have already described, and. In, in the last window, we have the PWM signal change possibilities. Um, we have here the CP frequency, which is um, from 900 to 1.1 kHz possible to be changed. Also the CP voltage and also the um, negative CP voltage as also you can change the duty cycle. But this is Nothing special. I guess a lot of other test systems have this um, possibility of changes. What in our test case is very special is the change of the rising and falling edge of the PWM signal. So you can change the time of the rising and falling edge um, in a range of approximately 
in best case, two microseconds up to 25 microseconds, depending on the load you have on the um, test system. So, for example, if we have a real charging cable, as here in our case, the uh, lowest rising edge and falling edge is approximately about six microseconds. But we can shift this up to 20 microseconds so that you can do special test cases for your system. How the reaction is on changing of rising and falling edges of the PWM signal. Actually, there are no test cases described for this matter, but I think a lot of people can think about um, if you have these kind of system, what you can do with these feature. So what we can see here on the oscilloscope vertical area, we have five volts. Um, in this case, we use um, a state B, nine volt, and also 5% um, duty cycle. What you can see here is we have a rising edge of 8.5 microseconds because we have a real charging cable and we have real car cable um, which is connected. So. Um, there's a lot of load of um, capacities and inductance on the um, on the system, but we will show now how to change the rising edge because you can see here the rising edge is actually eight microseconds, and now we move it to fifteen. Okay, not not fixed, but we have forty, which is also not bad, and not bad, and we go to the maximum, which is possible. So now we have 23. So you can see we can move the rising edge in, in an area of 11 microseconds, which is from my point of view very interesting because the norm says that the maximum rising edge and falling edge um, is allowed at up to 10. So you can test more or less than the double of the rising or falling edge what harm it do to your system if you change the PWM rising and falling edge on this matter. Um, I already told you that we can change also the voltage levels so that you can check when your system is changing from state B to C. For example, we have there the possibility to change it. We can also change the frequency range from 900 Hertz up to 1100 Hertz just to get also the influences out of a change of the frequency. So that there's a lot of testability on the PWM signal itself available for our system. But now we switch back to the test cases and we'll have a look for the test. We can now start the test session and then have a look what happened. Uh, we can see here the test session is started and we see the main window where we have actually the select state. <coughs> then supported app and all the other states of the closely layers are reached. We reach the, the test case end and start again for the next test case. So you can see here that we have um, chosen some of test cases out of the first few messages from the communication because, um, okay, we don't want to have this presentation last too long. So that's the reason why we choose only the let's say more quicker tests than possible, but nevertheless, we have also the power delivery and value detection and all these test cases are available. Um, we will have several packages. So for, for, the, for the one of you who are interested in our system, you can buy the simulation hardware with the uh, simulation software. 
just to have a counterpart for EV and EVSE testing. And if you are interested in, you can also get the test case pack so for the Dean 71 to 2. And also divided in EV and EVSE side because not everybody needs all of these test cases because it's not all companies are doing cars and also EVSEs. But nevertheless, we have a lot of test cases available actually. And yeah, you can see here how it's running. Actually, we have the supported app test, which is running on the communication here. What we have in the EVSE is a special device, which is out of a real EVSE, but we can't, from client's point of view, we can't tell you which ECU we are using here for the test, but it's not our test special device, it's a real device out of a car which is used here. We have also an OBC available so that we can test the full system with an OBC and also a PLC device. Um, we can also test an integrated OBC, so a lot of things are possible to be tested here. Um, what we have is only the PLC communication, so if you need any um, REST bus simulations or any other simulations for your own system, you need to provide this yourself because we are only testing the front end of the CP and the PP device. Uh, we have also some... <laughs> Sorry, no, the words are missing. Um, we have also a, a few uh, possibilities for, of manually testing, not only using the test cases, so that you can, for example, test your AC charging spot, which is only a, able to do um, the base communication, the PWM communication. This could be done also from the system. And also what we are offering is um, that we produce test cases of your needs. So you send us the test case specification and we do the test cases for you, for our system. We have also in um, our program uh, um, consulting parts so that we can show our uh, help on development and also on building up test benches and all these things. Also, a um, big part is, I think Annette has already told you that we have um, an um, academy which is online so that you can log there and can get these nice videos, not like this one, but different for a lot of things. I think in, in total we have two hours in the Embedded Academy um, where you can see a lot of things of automotive business. And um, this is our program. But actually, you can see, for example, that one case case has failed. Okay, it's, it's no surprise for me because we have prepared already this, that there is a not all green, um, all green testing is possible for everybody, but um, we want to show you also how to um, distinguish between green and red test cases and also to see how to find out where the problem is coming from if you have a red test case, because in, in fact you need to analyze it. We have a log file, we have also a result file, and this is shown in the this is shown by, by um, Jeff Gini uh, in hopefully a few seconds because if the test is done, he will explain you how to handle all these different result files. So uh, once, uh, once the test case is finished, we are creating the test report. And um, in this, I'm saving it as a, as a log file. And I already have an example, I will replace it. But uh, once we switch to the view, we have an HTML that is the full overview of the whole package. We have a log file, this is the more detailed reporting that you get from during the run. And then you have a data log folder which has all the 
all the messages themselves that are in it, that will be also view shown in the HTML file. So we'll open the HTML file first, because it gives you the best overview over the whole test run. Starting at the top, starting at the top, we have the, the information about the about the current test uh, test session. When did we, when did we test it? Who was uh, who was the tester? What was the current version of the system under test? And what was the version of the, the system that was testing? Then we get an overview about how many test cases we ran in total. This time we ran sixteen test cases. Of those, one one test case failed. The test case that failed was, in this case, the cable check six. And uh, we can click on it and then see what uh, the description of what was the, expect what was the expectation of the test case during the test run. Uh, we can see an XML. This is the extended view of the, uh, of the logging that we get, where we get the, each message that is being sent or being received and then why it failed. In this case, for example, we expected uh, to continuously receive the ISO cable check request, and, uh, but we got a TCP connection closed by the system under test. And uh, if we check out the XML file, then we can see here, it takes a second to load. But once we load it, we can see here the extended view of every message. And let's take a let's take a message as an example, and we can view the decoded XC message in XML format with everything that we received or that we sent. For example, we sent in this case the charge commit discovery response. And I can continue going to the bottom, the last message that we got. And the last message that we got or uh, that we sent was a charge for a cable check uh, request, then we sent a response, and then we wanted another uh, request, but we didn't get it, so we responded with that it failed. We expected it's a little bit different, and this is the XML overview. Yeah, what I, I want to add is, um, in the beginning you can see the data of the um, test itself, so that means the name of the test case, the name of the test guy, the name of the version which is used of the device on the test, and also the version of our test device which is used, so that if there are some problems you can analyze, or we can also analyze where it's coming from, if you find problems in test cases and so on. And um, for our idea, we think that this HTML document is very good for the um, next step in the test documentation. A lot of companies are using the HTML as a format to transfer data from one system to the other. For example, for a reporting system, for an error, error reporting system, for a lot of things which could be used. So we have on one hand the XML, we have on, on the other hand the HTML file, which could be used to be handled by any kind of um, four ticket system. And yeah, I think that's all for now. Hopefully it was not too much information for everybody. We have, uh, I think we have shown everything. Yeah? I agree. Okay. So I think we are finished now, and I hope it was very informative for everyone. If you have any questions, please send us an email with a name and contact and company and so on, so that we can contact you. It would be great if we have some phone numbers, because um, then if there are a question which we didn't understand, we can do it by phone, which is quite better. We have also a landing page on our system, so However, whenever you want to contact us, please use one of these things to get in touch with us. And I hope you have you enjoyed the short presentation we have done here. And yeah, I hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Um, hello again, this is Annette Kemp. Um, thank you very much for the engineers for this technical presentation. I would like to do a short wrap up what we've seen. Um, so for this presentation, we tested a vehicle. So we tested against um, electronic control units for the charging communication on the vehicle. And we simulated the, the charging pole with eSystem EDSE. And with a test board, we, uh, we were sending the PWM and P, um, PLC signals with um, the, the sequences and also with the test cases. And all this has, has been presented by the engineers. Thank you very much, Mievgini um, and, and Pat, for doing this. Um, and of course, we would like to know if you have additional questions, what's happening then. So we will answer your questions. Um, we'll try to do it as fast as possible. You have a possibility to send us an email at charging-test at eclipsigner.com. Um, we also um, set up a landing page. Um, so the slides are the same for the German and the English presentation. The German presentation was at 2 o'clock. And now this is um, the 4 o'clock presentation in English. And for this demo, we, we implemented a landing page with um, some information beforehand, and there will be additional information afterwards, uh, for example, also sequences out of this uh, video. Um, of course, we have a normal web page at eclipsigner.com for the charging test systems. And all the links we will put also into the YouTube video description, which we will upload soon after the event. And there you can find all the links, um, which um, are listed here. So we, we don't need to take notes, but of course you can take notes. I want to thank you very, very much for um, being part of this, um, for being interested, and we hope to hear from you and stay in contact. And yeah, thank you very much, and I wish you a very nice day. Bye bye from the whole Egypt Signer team.